What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you guys are new here, my name is Kyle and I do all things motorcycle related. So if that sounds interesting to you, go down, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon. So that way you guys get notified when I post new videos like this one. So as you can see, I got a different road glide up on the lift. This is a 2022 road glide special. This is my buddy Davins from work. Um, he brought it over because he wants me to do a handlebar job on his bike. So if you clicked on this video, chances are you either just want to come watch the video and get some entertainment or you're bored or you're looking to install handlebars on your road glide and you are interested in seeing how the process exactly goes step by step. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. So make sure to stick around and let's get to it. All right. So, as you can see, he still has the regular stock uh, bars on it from Harley. I believe they're a 9 inch rise bar. He's pretty tall. So, we're not doing anything T-bar related or anything. So, if you are looking about installing T-bars, uh, this is the install process for some things are going to be the same. Other things are going to vary a little bit differently. But overall, a lot of the steps are the same. So that's a good overview there and let's head over to the workbench real quick so as you see here we got his new set of bars he's going with the factory 47 signature bars like I have on my road glide um, these are 12 inch bars uh, I told him he probably would want 14s especially because of his height but I did express that you would have to definitely change some wires and cables around which he did not want to do. He didn't want to spend the extra money and stuff. I know some people say it is very easy to do 14 inch bars with all your stock wiring and stock clutch cable and such. Every bike I've done, it is super close and I would personally not even try it with 14s. I would just spend the extra money and get the extended cables and wires because you do not want to yank on something if you have to do a full bar lock and have something get screwed up. So I digress and without rambling too much about that, he went with 12s. That's his decision, not mine. And he's going with the Harley Davidson Black Dominion Collection grips. Um, he is not doing heated grips because once again, from my experiences, uh, mine crapped out and for ease of just running wires in the bars and such not putting heated grips in makes the job 10 times easier I would unwrap these however when you're running wires and such you know you got to kind of grab and yank and pull so we try to keep these protected as much as possible until the very end where we go to mount it on the bike so that is that so first step on installing handlebars we're going to want to pop off this left side saddlebag, pop off the side cover, and pull the main fuse because we're obviously going to be disconnecting um, wires and stuff and your gauges. So you don't want to throw any codes or anything of that nature. So first step is to pull the main fuse. So I already got the saddlebag removed. Um, if you don't know how to remove the saddlebag, you should probably just stop where you are and consult a professional for your install um, because that is super simple. Obviously pop the side cover off. It's just three rubber grommets. And then uh, right there is your 50 amp main fuse. So you just kind of wiggle it out. Main fuse is pulled. So therefore we can proceed with the install. Once your main fuse is pulled, the next step is get a sheet and we're gonna try to cover up the inner fairing as well as your fuel tank because mistakes can happen. So therefore you want to be protected. So this I'm gonna use for the inner fairing. So as you can see, the tank is fully covered and the inner fairing is fully covered. So the next step I like to take is, so I try to make it a habit. We gotta pop this switch off um, for your trip because otherwise you won't be able to get this housing off. And I always make a habit to forget until I have everything pretty much loose. And then I got to be like, damn, I forgot this. So you just lift up on it. And then we're just going to get a pick and pop it off. 
So that took a little longer than expected. Sometimes they literally, you get a pick in there, they pop right off. Other times you gotta just play around with it a little bit, but nonetheless, it is popped off. So the next thing that I like to do is get this cover below the ignition off. Um, if you look down where my pinky is, you're not gonna be able to see it, but there's a little piece where you can get like a little trim tool in there and that just pops off and slides backwards. Moving right along, I'm going to be taking off the gauge housing. It is actually a torque. So I checked, it is a T25. All right, so with both of those T25s out of the side, you can kind of just lift this off. And then, like I said earlier, once this piece pops off, you can kind of just turn the ignition to accessory and then just wiggle it right out of the side. And like I showed you, it clips in there and in there on the bottom. And that's where you can get your little trim piece in. With that off, we can start to get this gauge housing off. And then on the back side, I'll show you here in a second, you're gonna have two dummy plugs down to where your auxiliary switches would be, and then one main plug on the back of your gauges. And this one's a little bit more of a pain to get to. All right, and the gauge housing is off. So like I was showing you earlier, you got the plug for your gauges, one of your dead plugs here, and then the other dead plug. This one's a little hard to get to because the plug where you have to decompress it is on the back side of this, so it is a little tricky. But if you save that one for last, you can kind of get a little flat tip in there um, just to pop it off. So as always, make sure to set this stuff aside so you don't damage it. All right, the next thing before we start taking the control housings and getting the clutch handle or lever off, what I like to do is I like to put slack in the clutch cable since we're gonna be yanking and pulling it, um, just so that way when we do get the bars on, since the cable is gonna be manipulated a couple times, we can reset the, the clutch cable. So pop that off. This just slides up. We're just going to take a flat tip just to pop this tab out, like so. We're just going to pinch this down in and clip it up, and that's going to put slack in our cable. So if we come back to the lever, as you can see, we have slack. I will be working on the clutch side first to get the housing the mirror and the lever off. So real quick, it was a T20 for the control housing and T27 for the handlebar clamp. Once I got that off, I set the clamp aside on the left side. Right side will go on the right side of a microfiber, that way you know left from right. Um, I use my Crown Royale bag just to kind of cover up the mirror and the lever and kind of just drape it over here. That's why we cover everything up so it does not scratch or damage anything. So once I actually get to this point, I just leave this on for now until we get the bars off. So let's hop to the right side. So now that that is off, we can go ahead now and we can start to unplug our wires and then we can loosen up our handlebar clamp and take the old bars off. So there's going to be four wires to unplug here. Um, it is very messy. You'll see the four wires that come out of the bars and where to go. So using a quarter inch hex, you're going to take out your four handlebar clamps, take off your handlebar clamp, and then if you did everything right and unplugged everything, your bars and the wiring will come off. So now we can go put this on a nice flat uh, soft surface like a table or a couch. And then we can start stripping the wires out of the stock bars and start prepping to run the wires into the new bars. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys this here now. If you're doing bars on a road glide, um, like traditional bars, not a T-bar setup, Harley has this plastic piece that it's supposed to slide into here and here. When I already had the gauges off, this was already kind of wedged in here and it's really tight. So what I'm gonna work on real quick is Using a flat tip, I can pop all these plugs off. And then that Christmas tree down there, it's hard to see. 
which is why I'm showing you guys this now because if you get bars up here and stuff it is very impossible so we're just going to remove that it's in the way like you saw it, it's already popped off now it's just making it tighter and more of a mess um, and by popping these off we're going to gain an inch or two of wiring at the bike side which is ultimately going to help us when we have taller bars that we're putting on because you need all the extra wires that you can finagle so that's what we're going to work on and then i don't know if they changed it but there was a yes so they did not change it it's gonna be super hard to see at the bottom of this clamp here there is a wire tie or turkey band um restricting the clutch cable here so we're gonna cut that so that way it will free up our clutch cable um so that way instead of it running and getting pinched here we can have free flow with the clutch cable going straight up and out or like in your corner here so that is something else we're gonna have to do and uh i believe there might be another turkey band or something down in here once we get this plastic junk out of the way you can see it better but if you're putting bars on that is definitely something that you're gonna have to do pop these plugs out get rid of this plastic piece cut the turkey band just to free up your wires so that you are assured to have enough length for your extended taller bars so i got that plastic piece out i have my right side wires and my left side wires um right there is your hookup for your heated grips if needed i got the zip tie cut down here for the clutch cable and i had the zip tie cut down there for the brake line uh, those are definitely going to be needed to be cut to get the extra length to reach your new bars if you're using the stock cables so now with all this done it is time to go to the old handlebars work on getting the right side and left side wiring out of that and prepping the new bars to run the wires so at this point we can release this it just pops off from there we have to get these plugs disconnected that plug disconnected that popped off and then from there we can just pull the wires out from below so now i got these switches off um, one thing to note is watch these ribbons they are super super fragile um, and one of those costs like i think anywhere from 150 to 200 dollars so you'll be you'll be in your best interest to make sure you don't mess those up now that we have these loose wires up here at the top we can kind of just push and pull and wiggle these wires right on out hopefully they definitely come out way easier than they go in so this is going to be your left side throw it over there and then working on the right side harness the throttle by wire you can pop that off if you're reusing your old grip you're gonna have to use um, like a plastic tool or a screwdriver or whatever to get in there because this is glued on but if you're changing grips like we are you can just leave it on the throttle by wire can just pull out but like i said it's going to be a little difficult because you got two wires going in this side and you're just going to have to push and pull all right so this side's fighting me so i'm going to kill the camera and work on that until i can get it out so i kind of just had to wiggle around a little bit so i'm trying to pull these together because obviously they're coming up the same side alone make sure these plugs are in here i'm going to pull and at some point here where the right side control wire comes out and then the throttle by wire comes out so that is it for the stock bars so now we're going to bring the new bars over here and try to prep those to feed those on through so i have the new bars here i always try to just take off exactly what i need to get the wires out and wires in as well as down here i'm just going to create a little hole it is very important to try to keep the bars covered up as possible um, especially because running the wires does get very tedious and uh, you know 
That's why I like working on like this little futon here with a sheet over it as well, because when you're pulling and yanking and doing all this and all that, you want to make sure your bars are protected because the last thing you'd want to do is damage them before you get them on the bike. There's several ways to do this. You can use like weed whacker cord. You can use a pull string from a ceiling fan. You can use like a, a metal cable. You just kind of need something to drop in and get through. You can use baby powder or talcum powder, whatever, to kind of keep the wires to pull nicely. Um, I go ahead and I cut off all the tags on the wires. Like this one I didn't do yet. I go ahead and rip or cut those off because those just get snagged up in the corners here. That's pretty much the hardest part about doing bars is the internal wiring. Uh, just getting the new wires through. So I usually just try to take some silicone lube or baby powder and lube, you know, put some on a towel, lube up the, the wires pretty good. Uh, just so that way when you do get your weed racker cord or pull string through, it kind of pulls through smoothly. When you do these without heated grips, they do go a heck of a lot easier than if you're running heated grips because the left side you got to run two wires down and it just gets very congested inside the bars. These factory 47 bars are relatively easy because they are inch and a half down to the inch and a quarter, I believe, for the handlebar clamp. So there is that. So bear with me here. I don't know how much I can show you of this because like I said, it's very tedious and it takes a lot of trial and error. But if you use a pull string and then you can kind of just wrap it up with electrical tape and feed it through. So bear with me here. All right, so I got my pull string through all areas. Um, right here, I pulled this out because I always start with the right side, the throttle by wire side, because that is by far the hardest side to get the wires through. So obviously you have this side for the throttle by wire, and then here you'll tie in your control wire because you're gonna have to pull them through together or else it's gonna be a nightmare trying to do them separately. So uh, let me tie those up and see how we make out. All right, so a little update here. Got the throttle by wire in, got the control housing wire in, and got them all out. I currently have the chain on the left side. So I am about to hook up the wire to feed it through. I didn't show you that side, like I said, because there were some F-bombs and some other nasty words thrown around. Um, anybody that has ever done bars, if they tell you, oh, it goes real easy, they're full of shit. They're just trying to toot their own horn. Um, I'm sure, obviously, if you do them every day, you find quicker habits, but it is a pain in the ass nonetheless. Um, so that's why I wanted to tackle that hard side first and I'll show you guys kind of the same basics I applied to the right side for the left side. All right, so I'm pulling obviously the bottom end through. So what I was doing was get some small zip ties, kind of just feed this through in between the wires like so, get it back um, just a little bit there. And then now you can take some of your small zip ties Throw them on in between the balls there and then put another one in towards the end in case as you pull one breaks get it started then I'll put it through tighten them up so it kind of ends like that obviously you cut your tails off and then I just take some electrical tape kind of start at the plug here and then just go around this one didn't start off too good but try to make it as tight wrapped as possible obviously like I said we went through the hard side so this one I have a little bit more room for error just go down along the chain like so this just helps with your zip ties and such from snagging in the corners about there pull it off wrap it around make sure you like crimp up your end as good as possible there and I just from there, I'll just take a towel, spray some silicone lubricant on it, take it, and kind of just go over the whole wire with it. Just as an extra lubricant for the corners. Obviously, primarily focusing on the 
top piece there since it's the fattest, but go over the whole wire with that. And then from there, it's a little hard for me to kind of try to film this here and do it. Obviously, you kind of help it in the hole as you pull, you kind of force. And if you feel it snag, you can kind of just pull back, wiggle, and pull at the same time. And then obviously you're gonna have to grab down towards the bottom. Like right now we're at a little tight spot, so just kind of pull back a little bit and just wiggle it around. That's why I didn't even film the other side. But this is kind of starting to go relatively easy. Kind of push, pull, wiggle. We should be getting toward the end here. And just pull the bars up and I don't know if you guys can see that. Pop right out the bottom. Obviously, make sure there's a little bit there. Have the fun part of trying to unwrap it. So I just wanted to show you that left side. It's a lot easier because that's a simpler side. Um, like I said, the right side's a pain in the ass. There's no way around it. Now, if you're doing a heated grip, the left side's gonna be just as much of a pain in the ass as the right side. But that is that. Um, I'm just gonna unwrap this and get ready to start plugging and putting the controls back onto the bars. And then once that's done, then we can start to get the bars on the bike and start reversing the process of everything I've shown you to this point. But let me unwrap this and get ready to add the controls. All right, so we are back and we have some big progress here. Um, this is probably pain in the ass part deuce. Um, because when you plug in your control housings, you gotta kind of rotate them and then you gotta latch them and then the latch pops off and then you have to line up your grips. Then you gotta get this to where the housing closes evenly, evenly. Um, so that I wish I could give you guys better advice on. It's just very tedious. So that is the word of the day for any handlebar job is tedious because like I said, it's a lot of um, OCD. You have to get everything just right to where everything flows and then they only kind of go one way or the other. So then you got to make minor adjustments. But nonetheless, the housings are on. I got the backs on, grip the new grips on. Um, so at this point, we can carry the bars over and start to get them on the bike. If you like to just go, 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 get things done, this might not be a job for you because you do have to have a lot of patience, which sometimes isn't easy, but nonetheless, we must have patience if we want to achieve the end goal. So I'm going to go try to get these on the bike. Alright, so got the bars on. I'm gonna wait to really put it all back together until my buddy from work comes and we get the bars placed where he wants them. But the bars are evenly matched in the handlebar clamp and they are tight enough to where they're not gonna go anywhere so I can start reassembling everything else as well as start taking some of the protective wrap off the bike. Um, so with that being said, that's what I'm going to work on next. But I'm going to take a quick little break here. Day two.
What is up guys? So I'm picking up here the next day. A lot has happened. Uh, my buddy from work came over and uh, that's kind of where we left it. He had to sit on the bike and test fit the bars. And then from there, I just threw it back together real quick for him. So I did not record that, but let's check this thing out. Whew. Got the factory 47 bars all put on. Looks good. Got them adjusted to where he wanted them. Looks pretty good if you ask me. So I'm trying to think from where the last part of the video picked up. I knew I had the bars mounted. It was just a matter of adjusting the control housings and the levers. Um, and once you do that, which is, like I said, the word of the day yesterday was very tedious. Uh, once you do that, then you pretty much move to making sure the bars are where you want them, pushed forward, pulled back, and then you tighten those four handlebar uh, Allen head and then from there obviously make sure all of your connections are plugged in and once you do that You can plug your gauges in and kind of just let them lay there to test all your controls Make sure your horn your bike starts your throttle by wire works um, Turn signals your radio controls all of that and then once that happens and you can re-secure your gauges with the side screws one on each side now once that's done, and you can slide that little bezel back on. But uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Like I said, he was here. I didn't want to bother him too much and delay his time that he came over. Um, so he didn't ride the bike home today because it is pouring outside. So nonetheless, he will be back tomorrow to pick this thing up. Like I said, I didn't want to bore you guys too much with putting everything back together because it is the same reverse order as earlier and I don't want to hold him up but that is neither here nor there hopefully this video was insightful for some of you guys if you are looking to do handlebars um, in your garage on your own time I believe a dealer charges like six or eight hours something outrageous like that um, all in all this probably took me four and a half five hours from start to finish but there again could I cut some corners and save time absolutely but i like to be very uh particular with the way i do things um some call it that i can get a little too anal with certain things as far as making sure the levers are just right control housings just right um to help my ocd hopefully this video at the bare minimum gives you guys if you are unsure kind of what to expect and maybe enough to help you get the job done so if you lasted this long in the video, make sure to smash that like button, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon so that way you guys get notified when I post new videos like this one. Make sure to ride safe and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace!